So this week is Parsha's Bahar. Parsha's Bahar is the, the sugya of Shmita. Shvius. My name is Shmita Larsina. I think that's the most famous question. <laughs> <laughs> the most famous question in, 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 in Gomorrah, Mayan Shmita. Vayedaber Hashem el Moshe b'har Sina eleimo daber el Bnei Yisrael v'yomar Torah aleihem ki sovo el ha'oretz asher ani noisein lochem v'shov so ha'oretz Shabbos l'Hashem Shmita is a Shabbos. Stop work. It's an amazing thing. What's the mitzvah Shmita? What's the mitzvah Shmita? We live in Eretz Yisrael, so it's it's nogeya to us. In Chutzlars, they don't have it, but in here in Eretz Yisrael, we have it. What, what what's the concept of Shmita? So the the Kli Yaker, the whole and everybody says this. Kosh Baruch Hu was worried. They had just come out of a bubble. They lived in a bubble, literally. They had the Anania covered. They had air conditioning. They were surrounded. They were protected. The mun came down. They had, every day they had food. They had the bear, bear Miriam. They had water. They were in a utopia, utopian bubble for 40 years. Now they're coming to Eretz Yisrael conquering it and going into an agricultural society. In those days it was an ag uh, agricultural society. So they're going to start taking over their land, the lands, start planting, plowing, harvesting. They're going to start getting involved in everyday labor. And as we know, when you start getting involved in work, you forget about betochen because the work is what brings in the dough. The work is what the, the work is what, what, what accomplishes. Well, in my so, case, I usually lose money. <laughs> <laughs> if you work hard, you make more money, right? That's, that's what they say. That's what they say. It doesn't work like that, huh? So, the myth of shmi keeping shmita was to internalize the meter of amun and betochen. For 40 years, the Kaddish Baruch Hu put us in this bubble that we should rely totally on Hashem. That was the whole, the whole lesson of the 40 years in the Midbar. Rely on the Rebbeinu Shalalem. Amuna and Betochen. Now, Kaddish Baruch Hu was worried. They're going to go into the land. They're going to start going to work. Start getting involved in their farms. They're going to be engrossed in their farming and their efforts. And they would forget. And they would lose their Betochen. They would think that the Yiddish cup, you know, like when the 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 the, 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 the chalutzim, the pioneers, they came to Eretz, they came to Eretz Yisrael, and they started retaking over the land, and they worked very very hard, and they took a desert and they turned it into a look at the country today, it's it's amazing what they what they created, in this in the 70, 76 years that the the, the land has been. Uh, you know, that we've had the Eretz Yisrael. And they, what do they say? So I remember there was a movie once. This land is mine. God gave this land, land to me. me. Right. Na, 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 yeah. Na, na. So, so, so that's what they think. It's mine. And every, I have to work. And I have to work it in the laws of nature. And that's what they think. You have to work within natural means. <coughs> so, once every seven years, HaKadosh Baruch Hu had to remind them what it was to have the mun. Well, what, how, how it was it to be in the Midbar at the time of the, 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 the 40 years that they were in the desert. And once every seven years, Hashem totally removed them from natural course of action. What's the natural way of planting? Natural way of planting is you plant for two years. You plant for two years. And then you let it lie fallow for a year because you have to replenish it. It uses up all the nutrients 
in, in, in the ground and it has to replenish itself. So you have to lay, uh, let it lay fallow and then you have to use it again for another year or two and then lay fallow again. And if, if you go six years straight, you completely deplete the ground, the soil, of all this nutrients and you're not going to have anything. It's not going to grow anything. So what did the Kodesh Baruch Hu say? You're not going to do it like that. How are you going to do it? You're going to plant for six years straight. You're not going to lay fallow at all during those six years. Yikes! What's going to be? Don't worry. You're going to have a supernatural soil. It's going to be the same, same crops all six, well, all six years. But you're not going to work on the seventh year. Yikes, I'm not going to work the seventh year. What are we, what are we going to eat? Don't worry. Now normally, the, after six years of planting, so the sixth, years, sixth year is the most weak of all the crops. You're going to get a crop, and it's going to last you. You can eat it the sixth year, and the seventh year, and the eighth year. It's going to be good for three years. It's going to be good for three years. It's going to be a miracle crop. A miracle, it's amazing. After, after being, the, the, the soil has been totally depleted, you think, and you're going to have a miracle crop. It's going to last for three years. Now, what does it mean that it's going to have, going to be, what kind of crop are they going to have? Are they going to have a bumper crop? Are they going to have a triple crop? So there's a very interesting, the, the, the Mephorshim point out, the Kliyakar and the Sephorno. At the beginning it says, Sheishonim tizra sodecha, v'sheishonim tizmor karmecha. You're going to harp, harvest the crops. V'yosafte es tevu also, and you're going to harvest, the, going to harvest the the tevuah. And then it says, v'kit shishal, v'kit soimru. Later on in the pasuk, after it talks about shmita. And then it talks about Yoival, the 50th year. Now the 50th year, you have a double, a double problem because you have two years of Shemitah in a row. 49, 50. You have 49 is Shemitah. And then you have 50 is again Shemitah. And you have to have a crop that's going to last to, to, to the 51st year. To the 51st year, because the 50th year you also can't, uh, you can't uh, plant. The Kisamru, and you're going to say, What are we going to eat in the seventh year? We didn't plant, we didn't gather, as to Vosainu. But see, Visi es birchasi lechem, Vashana hashishis, Viosa es atvua, Lushalosh shonim. You're going to have a bumper crop that's going to last for three years. What's the difference? What is this new bracha? What is this new bracha? So the Kli, the, the Kli Yoker and the Svarno, they both say. HaKadosh Baruch Hu promised them. HaKadosh Baruch Hu promised them. First, first let, here, let, let me tell you over the Noyim Elimelech. I told you this last year. There's a Noyim Elimelech. It says basically the same thing as the Svarno. Noyim Melech, who's the Noyim Melech? Rabbi Melech. See, he had a brother, Zusha. He's the famous Zusha that everybody Zusha. talks about. Zusha, right? That was his brother. We don't have any Torah from Rabbi Zusha. We have Torah from Rabbi Melech. But the, we have one shtick Torah. We have one mimer that Rabbi Zusha said. Because Rabbi Eli Melech brings down his Chiddush, his, his Dvar Torah. It says in Shemitah, 
What am I going to eat if you're going to say, what are we going to eat in the seventh year? We didn't, we, didn't, we didn't plant, we didn't gather in. And then I'm going to give my bracha, the tzivisi es birchasi. I mean, until now he wouldn't have given the bracha? Oh, if you ask, I'm going to give you a bracha. And if you don't ask, I'm not going to give you a bracha. It says, when does it say you're going to get the bracha? Yeah. If you ask, what are we going to eat? Then, He doesn't have a He's going to ask. He's going to ask. He's going to ask. He doesn't believe. Right, and then you're going to get... Oh, only, if you don't, only if you don't believe, I'm going to give you my bracha. Yeah, and if you believe, I don't give you my bracha. You don't need it. You have to ask Oh, what does it mean, I don't need it? So he says like this. HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He created the world. We daven every day in Shmon Esrei. Right? Baruch Aleinu Sashon Azos. There's Kominis. V'sabeinu mituvecho. What do you say? You say Misaveinu Mituvah. What do you say? Mituvecha. Mituvah. Mituvecha. Okay, it's a machleik. It's the rush and the gra. Right. The rush says. Believe it or not. Yes, the, that was. You, you don't know the gra. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you don't know. We, we weren't. We were supposed to go right after in October. We were supposed okay. to see his cover, but okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. The rush says me too vecho. What are you talking? You were davening to a kodesh baruchu. The sabenu me too vecho. Give it. Give us. Give us. Satiate us with the with the flow with flow with the bounty of tu vecho of your goodness. The girl says no. Me too vo. With a mapeke, with a mapeke, with of the of the land. So I heard pshat. This is the gro. This is going my Rav. So I heard pshat. Eretz Israel is the center, right? Is 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 the center of the world. I don't mean the center of the world physically, like you know, where's the center of this big globe and. You know, the, is it, yeah, yeah, there's, there's no such thing as a center no, in a, in a the land mass of the world. <laughs> yeah. And then Israel's in the middle. Yeah, that's what they thought. Anyway. Well, I thought it's a right, the Anyway. I'll so. show you on the map, on the globe map, not on a, not on a flat map, on a globe map. The, the, the land that's uh. Anyway, but, but, but it means in, in, as far as the importance in Ruchnius, in the spiritual Shefa that comes down. So Eretz Yisrael is the center of the earth. What does that mean? That there are channels. HaKadosh Baruch set up the world. We think that when we plant, so we plant, and, and, and because we planted, so it grows. No. HaKadosh Baruch whatever we do, there's a shefa coming down from Shemayim, giving koyach to the ground. Everything that happens materialistically is because of a ruchnius power a ruchnius koyach, a ruchnius bounty that comes down. There are channels. It's called tsinoirois. There are many, many tsinoirois coming down. And through those tsinoirois comes the bounty. Now, does it come down showering all over the world equally from all sides? So the groa is learning pshat. No, <coughs> it goes through Eretz Yisrael. And then from Eretz Yisrael, it spreads out to all the other lands. That's why when the same Talamoto or same right of the same of Marita Tal, Marita Tal, Marita Ruch, Marita Goshem, is all dependent upon Eretz Israel. They had the question, "What do you do in Bavel? It's different." I mean, so 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 for Mashav Ruch, they said they wait sixty days after uh, after uh, Simchas Torah, you know, before they 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 they, they say Mashav Ruch, Marita Goshem. Uh, I mean, before they say Saint Talamotor, because they don't, it, it's, they don't need the rain until then. But, but for MS, everything depends upon, it, does, it depends upon Eretz Yisrael. And that's how the, we're the bounty. They ask the cash, what do you do in South America or South Africa? It's a totally, the seasons, Australia, the seasons are upside down, the topsy turvy. So why do they say the Saint Talamotor, Lafitte, Eretz Yisrael? 
because the whole Shefa comes through Eretz Yisrael. And therefore the Groh says, when you say, Borach Aleinu, you say, Vasabeinu mi tuvo, from the toiv, from the goodness that came to Eretz Yisrael, Sabeinu, even us, and he was in Vilna, in Sabeinu, even us in Vilna, give us, the, give us your goodness. If Klal Yisrael would have had proper betochen, if Klal Yisrael would have had t- proper betochen in Shemitah, the betochen that Akash Baruch wanted them to have, th- that they gained in the Midbar, and now they, th- th- they went over to Eretz Yisrael, if they would have continued that level of betochen, so then they would have, ha- they would have had a regular... Pro- They would have had a, a regular, they would have had a regular crop. They would have had a regular crop. And that crop, huh? Okay. And that crop would have lasted for three years. They would have eaten a little bit and been satisfied. They would have eaten a little bit and been satisfied. In other words, the, the, whatever they got, the normal crop that they got in the sixth year would have lasted them three years, but not that they would have had a triple crop. They would have eaten a third of it. And that would have been fine. That would have been fine. Just, just eat a little bit, and they're full. They're satiated. So they wouldn't have needed a, 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 a bumper crop. Ooh, long come people, they didn't have a Muna. Everybody said, what are we going to eat? We're not going to plant. Three years. We're not going to have enough for three years. We're not going to have enough for three years. We're not going to, what are we supposed to do? But see, V.C. is Birchasi. If you don't have a Muna, it stops up the Sinai rice. If you don't have a Muna, so the Sinai get blocked up. We have sinaris, we have channels coming down, giving us the shefa. And if you don't have betochen, it gets stopped up. That's why it doesn't work if you don't, we don't have betochen. So Kodesh Baruch says, I have rochmonos on you because you're my children. The CVC has because I'm going to give you a special bracha. What's the special bracha? What's the special bracha? You're going to have a three-year crop, a triple crop. You're going to have all of a sudden, and this is a miracle. After depleting the ground for three years, and normally nothing should be able to come out of it, you're going to get a miracle crop that is triple the amount. So let me, let, let me ask you a question. Which is better? Which is better? Having a, little, having a normal crop and, and spreading it thin? Or getting a triple crop and wow! I'm, I'm, my, my warehouses are full, overflowing, overabundance. Which is better? So vada, it looks better. It looks it's, better. It's, and it's it, it, people's more eyes more are satiated. Harvest. But it's not your eyes which are satiated. Listen, if, if you have a regular crop, you, you can store it, store it in your normal warehouse. It's going to have a special broch. It's not going to go rotten. You don't have to watch, watch it too much from the, from the mice. And it's going to eat, and you don't have to rent prepare more, some. Yeah. You don't have to rent uh, extra. You know what it is to rent extra space. You know the guy expands his business. Got, now he got to, he's got to rent a, an extra warehouse for, for he's got too much schayra. You know, if they get triple the crop, where they they have to build silos. They have to put in preservatives. They have to worry about the mice. They have to worry about the rot, and 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 it's it's and it's triple the work to harvest the whole thing. So it's, it's, it's less of a bracha. This is, this, is the bracha. this is the bracha that we say, It always bothered me. He with rotson. How does he satiate it with Ratzon? To be satisfied with the little that you have. And it's just as if you had 
a, a, you, were, you, 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 you had an abundance, and, and for you, that's great. That is the biggest bracha, that you're satisfied with just the little bit that you have. They say about the stipler. They say about the stipler. The stipler, you know, the stipler, the Rav Chaim's father, the stipler. So, so he was, um, he was always sandak. Every, everybody made him sandak. You know, he was sandak, you know, every month. Can, every, all the time, they called him to be a sandak. Now, it says that whoever's a sandak, it's a school, schooler for a shiris. So they asked him, where's the ashir? He was a nunny. If you pay for the suda, though, Rebbe. If you pay for the suda. That, 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 that doesn't say. That it doesn't say. That's, they're, they're, it, they're, they're looking for an excuse why it doesn't work. They're looking for an excuse why it doesn't work. But they asked the stipler, why aren't you rich? It says that the school of, for, of being a sandik is that you become an usher. And Rebbe's uh, not an usher. He says, what do you mean I'm not an usher? Of course I'm an usher. I have everything I need. He was very, very satisfied with what he, he had everything he needed. He called that a shiris. This is a man. He was drafted into the Russian army. He suffered in, in the Russian army. He refused to wear a, a winter uniform because it was full of shotness. He froze in the winter. He, 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 he didn't want to work on Shabbos. And he, he, he got punished. One, he did, one time he didn't refuse to work on Shabbos in the army. So they put him through a line of all these soldiers. And each soldier took his, the back of his, of his rifle and smacked him. He had to run through it. He was very happy. Baruch Hashem, I, I suffered for Shmir Shabbos. That, that's who this man was. And because of the cold, because he, was, he, he, you could, he could hardly hear, because of the cold... In, 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 in the Russian army, he, he, he lost his hearing. This, we, the people, you had to write him, write him notes. He, could, he couldn't hear what you were saying. And he said, I'm an usher. I have everything I need. You should have rotsoin. If they would have had betochen, then they would have had rotsoin. And they would have had a, a, a crop that was, that was it. That's, that's all they needed. And they would have eaten a little bit, and it would have been sa satiated. There's less cooking, less work, less harvesting, and it's, 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 it's enough. What are we going to eat? Oh, you're complaining now. Okay, so Kodesh Bocha says, okay, you're complaining? I'm going to give you three years of crops. You're going to have so much that's coming out of your nose. That's not necessarily a bracha, but it's a, it's a bracha. It's a special bracha, but it's not the bracha Kodesh Bocha wanted. When you complain and you don't see the, the, the bracha in the, you don't see the bracha in what a Kodesh Baruch is giving you, and you don't trust that a Kodesh Baruch is going to give you, when you don't have the bitachon, when you don't have the amuna, Kodesh Baruch is not happy with that. He's not happy. We're his kindalach, so he t still takes care of us. He took care of Klai Yisrael for four. What what, what, today is Pesach Sheni. Today is Pesach Sheni. So there's a widespread minig. It's not brought down in the Gemara. It's not a mitzvah. But there is a Hasidic minig. All the Rebbe's do it. And now it's widespread. Everybody eats matzah today. The box outside, anybody wants. Sure, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Oh, oh. Is Rebbe do the minhag or are you not going to say it? I do it. I'm okay. saying it. Oh, but, but listen, listen, oh. but, but, but I want to, because I, I want to instill in me the lesson of Pesach Sheni. But I want to ask a question. I always had a question. Before I started doing it, I asked a question. I investigated. Pesach Sheni is the 14th of, now I ate it for breakfast. One second, one second, one second. What's Pesach Sheni? It's the 14th of year. What was Pesach Sheni? On the 14th of year, just like by, I, I hear your question, the 14th of year, so just like in the Pesach Rishon, in the afternoon you bring the Korban Pesach, and at night you have a Seder with matzahs and moror and, 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 and Korban Pesach. So on, on the 14th you brought the Korban Pesach in the afternoon, and tonight you eat the matzah and the Korban Pesach. So when should we celebrate the matzah of Pesach Sheni? Tonight. tonight. So what are we doing eating it today? 
A lot of the rabbis have the kasha. A lot of the rabbis, it's brought down by, by, by all the rabbis, they eat on, the, during the day. Days. But it's not the time. If it's re, if, if it's a, a commemoration of what they did, they they did it on the Lel fifth Lel Tesvav. They didn't do it on Yudalid. We the the the, the, the minig is to do it. On, there are rebbe's who do both, because they have the kasha. The rebbe's have the kashas. They do both. They have on on Yudalid they eat the matzah, and then Lel Tesvav they eat the matzah. And have a you know, a, you know a second seder. So 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 there's there's the, the, the some rabbis actually make a seder. I mean, like, but it's no, it's not a real seder. I'm assuming some rabbis. Do listen, that. listen, <laughs> listen. It's not a mitzvah. It's not a mitzvah. But but I found a Yaakov Emden. Yaakov Emden in his seder. Yeah, yeah. So he says, Yant, Pesach Sheni is a yontif, a midrabanim, a yontif shel We didn't say tachlan this morning. Right? We didn't say Tachnan this morning. Oh, we said yesterday. Because it's not a day in and of itself. They asked the question, why Erev, by Erev, you do, on Mincha you do say Tachnan on Pesach Sheini? Because it's, it's a, it's a yontav because of the Pesach Rishon. So it's not a day in and of itself. It's like a Tashlumen for the first Pesach. So therefore it's... They asked, that's, that's the... That's, that's the terrace. That's the terrace. Say it. He asked, of course, why by Mincha yesterday? No, that's the terrace. Why you eat matzah today and not tonight? Why? Because it's it's a, it's it's a it's a tashlumim for the. No, but but so but you want to commemorate so what they the did so and they, they did in Tesvav. Listen, listen, listen. listen. He days. says you're making a mistake. Rav Yaakov Emden says we're making a mistake. We think it's because of the matzah that they ate during Korban Pesach. He says that's not the matzah that we're commemorating. What is the matzah that we're commemorating? Elastids. If you list, if you read. There's two matzahs. There's matzahs of. Uh, no, 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 no. Joshua when he came in there at No, 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 no. It says, where do we see Pesach Sheni? We're by the Mun. In Parsis B'Shalach, Vayisu Me'elam, Vayavu Koladas B'nei Yisrael Amid Barsin, Ben Renu B'Chamisha Asuyom, on the 15th of Eeyor. They came into Midbar Sin. And they said, Who's go- How we died? We should have died in the, in the three days of, of Choshech in Mitzrayim. Then we had Shifteno Asira Bus, we had a pot of meat, and we had enough, we had un- bread, Lesoiva was satiated with bread. And you took us in this uh, in this midbar. You want to kill the the whole cow of Israel in in hunger, barov. Yeah. The Kajbach said, "I'm going to give you money." So when did the money come? When they complained? Why on the fifteenth? Where? What did they eat until then? This is one month later. They went out. They had a couple of months. How much does your matzah last? How many days did your matzah last? You have to eat. Ma- you had to eat, right? Three days, maybe. The amount of matzah that they took out, maybe three days, and this is thirty days later. Rashi says they had a miracle. The matzah that they carried out of Mitzrayim, right? That they, they they had matzah they carried out of Mitzrayim because they, they had a run. They couldn't, right? And it was it was, it was matzah lochomets because because they they, they they didn't have a chance to rise. They had a run. It lasted for 30 days. It lasted for 30 days. So on the 14th day was the last day that they had matzah to eat. The next day, they saw the matzah's gone. So then, oi, what are we going to eat when you don't see anything in front of you? As long as they saw the matzah in front of them, so they were satisfied, so they didn't complain. Now that they don't see the matzah in front of them, what are we going to eat? What? This is an amazing thing. This is an amazing thing. Kla Yisrael, they had witnessed 30 days before, 
or they wished the whole year before they had witnessed ten Marcus. They had witnessed Marcus Bechiris thirty days be before. They came out. They saw Kriyas Yamsuf. Hakshem brought him into the desert, and they saw a miracle. They ate a little bit of matzah, and they were satisfied. You didn't get the message, guys? Kodesh Baruch is taking care of you. And we say, That was the greatness of Klai Yisrael. We went out with absolutely, absolutely no provisions. So if a Kodesh Baruch took you out, don't you think he's going to take care of you? So the matzah is finished. Okay, what do we do now? Go to Moshe and say, okay, Rebbe, can you help us get some breakfast? How do we get some breakfast out of uh, Kodesh Baruch Hu? You know, the matzah's gone. What do they do instead? They complain. Oi! We should have died in Mitzrayim. Now we're they didn't see anything, so maybe we're going to die. We're going to die. Why is he doing that? And now Kodesh Baruch Hu says, okay, I'm going to give you the mun. And if they hadn't complained, he wouldn't have given them the mun. Of course he would have given them the mun. But because they complain, so there's a pasikta. The pasikta says because they complained, so it was held against them, and they lost the schusim, the schuyot. Now it doesn't say what schuyot they lost. I want to render a guess. If they would not have complained, if they would have kept up their betochen, they saw a miracle. Now take it one step further. Don't you think a Kodesh Baruch who's going to take care of you? He took care of you until now. You're here. So he's going to continue taking care of you. Have betochen. If they would have continued their betochen and not complained, you know, maybe we would have had mon today. Why don't we have mon today? The Baal Shem says we don't have mon today. Because we don't have enough betochen. If we had enough betochen, we would have had enough, we would have had mon today. It's only because they didn't have betochen. So Kodesh Baruch took it off their schusim. And I brought down last year, we talked about the mon, so the, so the Medrash brings, asks, the Medrash relates to us how much mon did they have? They had some, they had mountains of mon. It was like mountains of snow. That, that came down every day and then melted and then nochomo and then nochomo but they had mountains they had so much because a person wants to see I want to see I want to see I, I, I've got a business I want to see money in the bank I don't want to every, every month I got to ju just make it every month I get and, I'm, I, and I don't know where I have to pay a mortgage and I got to pay the electric bill and I got to pay the school and I got to pay the, the grocery bill and then my wife needs a new dress I got to pay for that and I got to pay for the car and you got a lot of expenses I want to see it in the bank I want to I want a little bit of a you know savings account here you know and then what's going to be when uh, you know after uh, 78 you know 70 years when I retire I got to have you know a, a, a pension fund you know I got to I got to have I want to see it Real betochen is when you don't see it. You live date. I'm not saying we're on that madrega. I'm not advising anybody here to actually practice that because unfortunately we're not that's, not, that's not our level. But we have to believe that a Kodesh Baruch Hu can do anything. And if we believe a Kodesh Baruch Hu can do anything, he will do anything. And therefore, Kodesh Baruch Hu, when they complained, he had to give them a special bracha, a mamtir, a mamtir showering down, mamtir, raining down the mun on them. This is a very, very important concept in the Chumash. We find the similar co concept by Sori Menu. Sorry, Meno, she was barren. She wanted children. She didn't have any children. She's 90 years old. It's already over. You know, it's over. It's, it's not shy. You know, she, she's, she's, her body's all withered up. It's not shy. You know, it, it, it's, it's a 90 year old lady's, you know, 
right? Three vagabonds, three wandering Arabs come out of the desert, and her husband is a, he's got this passion about Hachnosus Orchim. He brings him into the house, checks for him wines and dines them, tongue, everybody had tongue, and, right, and he, he, he had a whole suitor for them. And then they, they want to do the kosher bracha, so they could where's Sora? Where's Sora? Want to pass her the kosher bracha? That's what Rashi brings down. They want to give her the kosher bracha. They, 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 were, they had a, a fa fabulous suitor. This year, this time, a year from now, you're going to have a baby. And she laughed. And not out loud, she laughed inside of her. Right. Sure, guys, right. Uh-huh. I'm going to have a baby. Yeah. This, me, this withered old body, is going to have a baby. My husband is an old man. I'm going to have a baby. Come on. So Kodesh Baruch goes to Avram and says, Sarah left. Why'd she, why'd she laugh? Right? She, I didn't laugh. It was so deep, it was inside of her. I mean, she, she I mean, you know, it was a, she, she didn't either she didn't realize she had laughed, you know, or, or she didn't see anything wrong in laughing. Let me ask you a question. Do you see anything wrong in laughing? See anything wrong in her laughing? Three vagabonds come out of the desert, right? And they say, and after they wine and dine, right? And maybe they had a little bit too much wine at the Suda, and they said, Gveret, Gveret Sora, you're going to have a baby. Listen. I, I, th I, th I, think, I, I think you guys had, have sunstroke, heat exhaustion. You came out of the desert. You know, I, come on. Really? So what was, why did Shem Kodesh Baruch take her to task for laughing? She was right. Zog the Ramban. What does the Ramban say? Say Amen. Huh? Say Amen. The guy give you a bracha. Say amen. Now it doesn't mean these guys, maybe he's a hidden Sadik. Maybe this guy's a hidden Sadik. No, he's not a hidden Sadik. Come on, three guys, these, 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 these right? Today, every, every, everybody thinks that, um, everybody thinks like, you know, this, 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 you, you get a weirdo. You get a weirdo. You go to the Kaisel, and there's a guy dressed up as Dovah the Melech, and he's got a harp, right? Right? Don't get too close. You're looking really strange right now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and and and. Do you collect your money? Don't, don't, don't get too close to him because I think he smells of vodka, right? And he gives you a bracha. It's funny. Oh, he's a hidden sadik. Well, it's funny for the he's a hit, right? He's a hidden sadik. He's a hidden sadik. He's not a hidden sadik. He's probably a drug addict. You know, come on. <laughs> he's an alcoholic. He's not a hidden sadik. So these three guys, vagabonds, they're a hidden sadik. They're good. It says Avram Vil Chap that they were Malochim, but Sora didn't. She thought there were three, three Arabs, right? So she had a right to laugh. No, you guys, what you your your bracha, you have no koyach. You're not a hidden sadik. But what you said that I could have a baby, Amen. I believe it. You can believe. You have to believe a Kaddish bracha can do anything. That's what you have to believe. You have to believe a Kaddish Baruch Hu can do anything. Remember uh, Rav Avram Torsky Zatzal? His father was a Hasidic Rav in, in Milwaukee, of all places. You know, a lot of people ran away from New York to get, you know, to get, to get away from the, uh, what was going on in New York. So he ran away to Milwaukee and he established a community in, 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 in Milwaukee. And that was Avram, Avram Tversky was his son. So Rav Tversky, he said a marshal. A man comes to the rabbi, says, Rabbi, I have a faith crisis. Yeah, what's the problem? He says, I'm fabulously wealthy. I have three sons and they're fabulously wealthy. I have three sons-in-law, and they're fabulously wealthy. 
barring a global apic, a, apocalypse, a, 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 a universal tragedy, an atomic war, I don't see any way that God could make me poor. Rabbi says, hmm. That's, that's, a, that's a good question. That's that a good not question. worth the wager. Not worth it. That won't be cool, yeah. <laughs> a, a global apocalypse? I mean, like, you know, the, the, the stock market crash and everybody could lose their money. It ha it's happened. We've been there before, you know. It could be a nuclear war, everybody gets killed. But besides that, how can he lose all his money? And even if he loses his money, but he's got three sons. And what's the odds? And then three sons are going to lose, but he's got th three sons-in-law. What's the odds that they're all going to go down all at the same time? The real estate always goes up, right? Yeah. Two to one. How can he become destitute? Two to one on. <laughs> so, so, so you don't think like that. Don't talk like that. Kodesh Baruch can do anything. Kodesh Baruch is all-powerful. He's omnipotent. HaKadosh Baruch can do anything. Rabbi, I don't see it. I have a faith crisis. Bam, slams the door with his faith crisis and goes out into the street. Goes out into the street and all of a sudden he, a mood comes over him. Something comes over him. He wants to convert to Christianity. I have to convert. I have to convert. He, 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 he all of a sudden became insane. He got this this, this juke in his head, I have to convert, I have to convert, I have to convert. He runs over to the nearest church, knocks on the door, and the priest opens up the door and he sees you know, a guy with a beard and payers and says, yes, can I help you? He says, I want to convert. Come on, buddy, I, I have better things to do with my time. He says, you know, what, do you, what do you want, buddy? He says, yeah, no, 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 I, re I really mean it. I want to convert. I want to embrace your religion. It says the only way you can embrace our religion Pay for it. is to you have to prove that you're sincere. How do you prove that you're sincere? You have to sign over all your material possessions to the church. Okay, okay. So he goes into the priest's office. Priest takes out. He's got. He's already got these documents. He's got the document. I'm ready. <laughs> he's got the document ready. Fills out the sign. I, Uncle Schwartz, sign over all my material possessions to the church. Sign on the dotted line. He signs. Priest takes the paper, puts it in the drawer. Come back tomorrow. We'll do the baptism. So he goes outside, and all of a sudden the mood pops away from him. Just le leaves him. I then. What did I do? I'm destitute. I gave away all my money to the church. My sons are going to sit shiver for me. My sons-in-law are going to disown me. I've got no money. There's no hope for me. He goes running back to the rabbi. Rabbi, I'm totally dis dis destitute. I don't see any way Hashem can get me out of this. I think I've heard this before. <laughs> we had this conversation a few hours ago. He says, but I can't. How can Kodesh Baruch get me out of this? Kodesh Baruch can do anything. Do you believe that? I believe. Oh yes. Oh boy. Do I believe? I believe. I believe in Hashem. I believe in Hashem. And all of a sudden they hear the fire engines, the sirens of the fire engines, and they turn around, they look outside to see what's going on, what's the commotion, and the church, the church is on... <laughs> <laughs> the church is on fire. Church is on fire. The paper is gone, right? The, the priest is gone. The desk is gone. No more paper. No, right? No more evidence. No more evidence. A Kurdish Borcha can do ever, anything. This is the lesson. This is why, this is the lesson. We eat the matzah today on Pesach Sheni as a remembrance of the miracle. A little bit can get you past. The little bit of matzah they took out of Mitzrayim lasted for 30 days. It's a commemoration not of the matzah they ate on Pesach Sheni. It's a commemoration of the matzah they ate up until Pesach Sheni. It was the last day of matzah. 
is, it was the beginning of the Mun. It was the beginning of the, of, 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 of the Yeridus Haman. And this is Parshish B'Shalach, where we have to strengthen ourselves in, in, in Betochen. The Toldus Yaakov Yosef, he quotes the Rambam. Rambam. If a person would have perfect Betochen in the Kodesh Baruch Hu, you can merit the Mun today. It's Rambam. He says it's the Rambam. The Baal Shem says in Parshish Michetz, person who trusts in the Kodesh Baruch Hu, Right? He's surrounded by Chesed. Chesed Yesoi Vavenehu. Habotech Bashem. Chesed Yesoi Vavenehu. You get the clouds, you get the protection of, 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 of a Kodesh Borucho. This is brought down in, in also the uh, Chaim Volozhin. Not only by Baal Shem, but Chaim Volozhin. So it's not just the Baal Shem, it's also Chaim Volozhin. Person has Betochen, all the bad things of the world. He's got a bubble. He's got a lucite. Imagine you have a lucite bubble around you. Like the, the, the Anania covered, a lucite bubble. And all the things that are trying to, to attack you, they can't get in. Your chesed yisoy venu. He's surrounded with chesed. Even if you've been condemned to terrible decrees, there are gezeras on, on you. And this is also brought down in the Nefesh HaChayim. Pure betochen, like by, by uh, Kriyas Yamsuf, Pure betochen, it annuls all the decrees, all the gezeris. They can't affect you at all. Habotchin b'ashem, kahartziyon lo yimot li oilam yeshev. A person who trusts in Hashem, he's like hartziyon. He will never falter. He will never fall down. He will sit there in in betochen, in betach, in insecurity forever. That's what a Kurdish Baruch wants us to have. Malachim told Sarah on Pesach. Okay. So, Abateh so. Bashem Chesed Shavaveno. So that's that's the limit of uh, Parshas Bahar. We have to learn the Parshas Bahar. And don't ask the question, what are we going to eat? And then Be'ez HaShem HaKadosh Baruch will send down the Shefa and we'll be able to, 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 to live securely. Yes? You said that it's Yerida Saman, and yet it's this week's Parsha Bahar. It's, it's, like, it's like Semach. It's like coming out of the ground, Shemitah. Right? Is, is, there like more of a, is there like more of a Muna when you have to do these Shadlus and it comes out of the ground and you have to wait sure, for you Shemitah don't see versus... It. Haman, you're just like, okay, it's coming, oh, great, you know. Well, it's first of all, you, you seem to first of all, it, it, yeah, it, level to wait for the well, I'm not going to get in higher level. They were on a higher level in, 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 in the midbar, and in the midbar they got a direct handout from a kodesh baruch The yeah, mun so was a direct. It seems like the midst. Because we are now, a a, level. what did the kodesh baruch do? What he put us into the land. That means we have to be earthly. It was in the midbar. We were la- living in like a li- literally in a cloud. We're in a cloud. We're in this bubble of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, you know, a satellite. We're in a satellite raised up above the world, and the Kodesh Baruch Hu was 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 ha- giving us direct handouts from Shemayim. Now, but he, that wasn't his kavana. His kavana was to put into our minds. Kodesh Baruch Hu wanted to put into our minds uh, the concept of betochen, amun and betochen. Believe in Hashem. Now, where is it more of a, of a kunz? Where is it harder? Where is it more of a, of a nisoyan, of a test, to believe in Hashem? In this lucite bubble? Or, no, go into the real world and still have betochen. Take a little bit of a seat. So, okay, so it's, it's coming out. I'm saying it's coming, it's right. coming out. It's coming right. out. But it's com- versus your yeah. I'm, I'm just... <laughs> No, because we are now earthly. He wanted us to live in the world. And it's, the, the earth is now, you, you have to do whatever is natural in the earth. He put a koyach in the ground that it, you know, when they, when, when, when they came, came into Eretz Yisrael, so Yeshua says, I want to show you a miracle. I want to show you a miracle. I want to show you a miracle. He took some seeds and he planted them. He says, come back in two days. And all of a sudden they see them, they see them all growing. How, how does something come out of this little seed? They never saw that before. If you think about it, that's a miracle. It's just amazing. That's it takes the, something, you kill it, it goes to the you, ground. You put a little seed, it goes into the ground, it disintegrates, and then it grows 
a, a tree, an apple tree, with hundreds of apples on it. And then you take the seeds, you do it again, and another, where's the factory? Where's, where's, it, it's, it's a miracle. Where's, where's the, where's the instruction manual? Where, where are all the chemicals? Where are all the chemicals? A little seed is worth is a couple of grams, and, and, and all, the tree with all the apples is maybe half a ton. Where'd everything come from? Where'd everything come from? I heard uh, Ben C. and Schaefer, he's, he's, in, he's, he's, he's done his homework on this. He says they did an experiment. They took a f big flower pot and they took an apple tree. They, 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 they took a uh, seed, you know how much the seed is, and they weighed it and it weighed half a ton. And they put the seed in, they watered it, and they got a big tree with all the apples on it. Okay, And then they, they weighed all the apples, and the apples weighed, I don't know, a couple hundred pounds. I don't know what, how, how, many, you know, how many apples they had there. Yeah, And then they weighed the dirt, the same half a ton of dirt. I mean, the, dirt the dirt weighed the same. So where did this, this hundreds of pounds of CO2, apples come from? CO2, Rebbe, CO2. It, it came from the air. Oh, just out of thin air, you yeah. got apples. Yes. Oh, that's a kunz. Yeah. That the seed knows how to take air, carbon dioxide, whatever it takes, and it converts it into, sure. right? Yeah. In, 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 it takes the energy and converts it into matter. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Victor Miller is amazing, but he talks about how amazing lightning is, why we say rock on lightning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how much, like the, the Haber Bosch process, unbelievable. Um, absolutely unbelievable. And you're just talking about how, like, the, the six year, you know, Shemitah that's, that's the most fat, like, it should, should have been fallow year three, year six, right? Um, is that shot with Meister Ami? Is that why? It's like three and six. Is that the connection? I don't know. That I never saw. I thought, right, okay, I thought that's where he was going with, like. Could be. Could be. I don't know. Sure.